India's Supreme Court gives the army a month to offer women officers permanent commissions. Taiwan says the Dalai Lama is welcome to visit the island. Social media giants suspend cooperation with authorities in Hong Kong. And the US clears arms sales worth $7.5 billion. You're listening to Stratpost Daily. I'm Saurabh Joshi and it's Tuesday, July the 7th. The Supreme Court has given the army an extra month to comply with its order to offer women permanent commissions and opportunities for command appointments, citing the fundamental right to equality under the Constitution of India in a landmark judgment in February. At the time, the court had rejected the arguments of the Defence Ministry and the Army that attempted to undermine and cast aspersions on the abilities of women officers. The Defence Ministry had requested a further six months to substantially comply with the February judgment because of the COVID-19 pandemic, which Justice Chandrachur rejected outright and demanded complete compliance in a month's time. Lawyers appearing for women officers pointed out that in an apparent attempt to defeat the purpose of the judgment of the Supreme Court, the army has been recently changing the physical standards applicable to women to deny them the opportunities for permanent commissions or command appointments. In a remarkable story, The Week magazine had reported on the 24th of May, the passing out parade at Officers Training Academy Chennai in March was marred by an unusually high failure rate of women cadets. The number of women cadets failing the physical tests went up soon after the Supreme Court ruled in favour of permanent commission to female officers in the armed forces. In an enormously consequential move, Taiwan has said the Dalai Lama is welcome to visit the island. Although not an outright invitation, a visit by the Tibetan spiritual leader would be considered hugely provocative by the Chinese Communist Party, signifying an apparent convergence of interests between the two entities it considers among the greatest threats to its existence. Followers of the Dalai Lama celebrated his 85th birthday on Monday, and the US government said, We thank India for hosting His Holiness and Tibetans in freedom since 1959, and wish His Holiness happiness. There were no birthday wishes for the Tibetan spiritual leader from India's top political leadership in this time of tensions with China. The Lieutenant Governor of Ladakh and the Chief Minister of Arunachal Pradesh, the Governor and Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh, and two Union Ministers conveyed their wishes on his birthday over Twitter. Social media giants Google, Twitter, Microsoft, which owns LinkedIn, Facebook, which owns WhatsApp and Instagram, and Telegram have decided to suspend their cooperation with the authorities in Hong Kong after a new security law came into force in the city last week. Even Zoom has decided to suspend cooperation. The security law has been criticized for giving authoritarian powers to representatives of communist China. Under the new law, authorities can raid premises, seize equipment and demand the removal of content upon penalty of jail. Schools in Hong Kong have been ordered to remove any books that violate the new law. Beijing-based TikTok has decided to withdraw from Hong Kong altogether. Last year, TikTok's owner ByteDance said it had 150,000 users in Hong Kong. The app was banned in India last week after tensions over Chinese intrusions into Indian border territories. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said on Monday that the U.S. was also considering a ban on the app for spying on users. Interestingly, Apple has not yet announced any suspension of cooperation with authorities in Hong Kong. The U.S. Defense Security Cooperation Agency announced approvals of major arms sales amounting to $7.48 billion. The three largest approvals in value were for $3 billion worth of petroleum to Israel, $2 $2 billion for three Northrop Grumman E2D Advanced Hawkeye aircraft to France and $2 billion for eight Bell Boeing MV-22 Osprey tilt rotor aircraft to Indonesia. The sale to Indonesia would make the Southeast Asian country only the third operator of the tilt rotor aircraft after the US and Japan. France already operates the E2C, an earlier variant of the E2D, which is a tactical airborne early warning aircraft 
capable of operating from aircraft carriers. Approvals were also announced for a $380 million proposed sale of six Black Hawk helicopters to Lithuania and a $100 million sale of 27 Stryker infantry carrier vehicles to Argentina. The Stryker ICV, V-22 and the E-2 have been offered to India in the past. A distant cousin of the UH-60M Black Hawk, called the MH-60 Romeo, was ordered by the Indian Navy recently. The order for 24 MH-60 Romeo helicopters is worth more than $2 billion. And that's it for now. If you like this podcast, do subscribe to it on Apple and Google Podcasts. And don't forget to follow Stratpost on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube or LinkedIn, whichever you find convenient. I'll be back with Stratpost Daily tomorrow.